y'all. Welcome back to Toya DTV. Okay, so we are back for season five, episode seven of Real Housewives of Potomac, Fireball and Fire Pits. Y'all, I am so ready for them to leave this lake house. You okay. know, it finishes up exactly where it left off last week, where they're finishing up at the crab place and at the restaurant they decided not to tell in front of everybody so i can applaud them on that i still feel like giselle should not be involved but in a talk in private so they get back to the to the lake house and they all are changing into comfortable clothing monique has the uh plan for everybody to make s'mores by the fire everybody's preparing to go outside everybody's getting what they need and the, um, monique and everyone is going outside and giselle and candace are sitting on the couch so monique is like come on y'all we're going outside so giselle said well we're gonna um we need to uh talk for a minute um so we need to talk for a minute so we'll be out you know so Monique says, okay, so y'all want us to build a fire and y'all just sit in the house and chill. I don't know how hard, how hard it is to build a fire, but we didn't see them build the fire. We saw her putting lighter fluid on it. So we don't know what it all entails. I don't know what it all entails, but she made it seem like it was a lot to do. She came back in the house to get the graham crackers, the chocolate, and the uh, marshmallows and stuff. While she's grabbed that, she's like, oh, oh, y'all still talking. And it's kind of weird to me. It's kind of weird because she's saying it in a very joking way. But inside, she's really, she's really mad for real. Like, it is not a game. Like, but across the screen it looks like she's playing with them she's joking with them she's rolling her eyes she's eh, y'all just want to sit in here you know like kind of nitpicking but not on a serious note candace and giselle are on the couch and they're waiting for ashley to put dean to sleep and they're like nervous because she doesn't know that they're about to hit her with this kind of news so Candace is nervous. She's feeling like her, her palms are sweaty and all of that. Rightfully so if you're about to tell somebody some crazy information like that. But anyway, Ashley comes down. Monique got an attitude because Ashley was invited to the conversation and she wasn't or whatever the case may be. Monique was doing way too much. I understand they're in your house. I understand you had plans, but they're coming out after they talk. I don't get what the big deal is, but Candace shows Ashley her phone to read the messages for herself. So Ashley is a little bit like, what? But it doesn't seem to be at all very shocking to her. Almost, It almost seemed like she said to herself, here we go again. It was, it was weird and sad at the same time. They had that moment with her. They said whatever she wants to do, she can keep it. And then they all go out to the fire pit. So while Monique is using the lighter fluid on the fire pit wendy is scared that would have been me you feel the heat from fire like that and you're that close it is it's a little freaky and and monique said well that's why you got need to fix your soul and then you wouldn't have to worry about burning and stuff like this i thought that was funny because that has absolutely nothing to do with it <laughs> so when uh to go back when giselle and candace brought the news to ashley she says how, well, from day one, I've been reading emails, reading texts, and sniffing underwear from day one. That is very weird. From day one? She also admits that um, there was a moment that she had with Michael when she was pregnant. And he went to the strip club and he came home smelling like perfume. And she smelled it and he felt bad and... He said that he stopped going to the strip club while she was pregnant. So Ashley uh, kind of appreciated the way Candace handled the whole text messages coming and everything. So out at the fire pit, we got Monique telling Wendy, you know, I thought you were older than me because you're so mature and your accomplishments and everything. And was like, I get that a lot, you know, so everybody comes out to the fire pit now. So everybody's trying to make s'mores and Giselle 
is being girly. She's scared that she's going to burn her eyebrows off. Before Giselle started roasting marshmallows, um, she volunteered an excuse for why they were talking. And she said it was to plan something for Monique. And Monique knew that wasn't true. I don't understand why you would volunteer a lie. That kind of lie. To the birthday girl. She um, hangs out for a little bit. And then she tells everybody, hey, I, got, I need to go to bed because I got to get up early in the morning. Giselle goes to bed. Robin goes to bed as well. And Ashley goes to bed. As the rest of the ladies were not ready to go to bed. So what they did was they went down to the bar in Monique's home. Shots of fireball. Gosh, Karen got tore down. It was so funny to see Karen like this because she really was just kind of speaking her mind and she wasn't all about the glitz and the glam. She was just speaking her mind at that point. Like, you know what? I don't care. I've let all my, I've let it go. I'm, t I'm just talking. Karen says that her vagina might be old, but her vagina is moist. <laughs> old and moist. Ugh. It just sounds crazy. So Karen has had so many shots at this point. She's slurring her speech. So she's trying to get a point across to the ladies. Trying to make the point of ladies, when you marry, make sure that you marry legitimate. Because she said her and Ray are married. When it came down to the tax issues that they had a few seasons back, she had to put up half of her money in order for them to stay afloat. She wants a return on her funds. In a marriage, if one person is in trouble and the other person has it, I mean, all the money should be considered equal but you know sometimes you got a stash that they don't know about and it could come in and save the day you just never know Karen asked Monique well asked she just said she's been praying on their friendship and she wants everybody to be okay is Candace and Monique okay Monique immediately says I don't want to have any deep conversation I just want to laugh and key key and and drink so it's the next morning Giselle is leaving for NY uh, Monique is up Karen is up and Monique is like Monique is like I'm surprised you're up you're really an OG for real Karen's like I am an OG so Chris arrives to the home most of the ladies that heard him come into the home uh, kind of yelled thank you for allowing them to be in their home I love that that was so respectful I'm loving Wendy this episode Monique is still Monique is still potty training T'Challa. I think that she's doing a good thing. Most people are looking at that situation like, why she get a bird? Why is she potty training a bird? Well, if you want a bird and it's going to be in your house, you don't want the bird crapping everywhere. She don't want to keep her, her bird in a cage. She wants the bird to be free to fly around. I'm all for it think outside of the boxes so Monique is talking to Chris and she's like I think I'm starting to comprehend his language like I know that when he says certain things it means that he wants me to scratch his head and he's like okay Monique okay she's like no I'm serious so Chris went to go wipe something off of Monique and T'Challa <laughs> did that not to bite at me it was so funny Chris jumped back so fast and then I saw him rub his head. It was so cute. I really thought that Chris never touched the bird. Period. I thought he was scared of the bird, but apparently he's not. He just doesn't like the bird. So Robin is up and she's come to the main house. Wand is going to remain absent because he has to coach football. They're all kind of just outside and kind of just, just laying out a little bit, chilling out. Karen says that Giselle has been doing a lot of sidebars. And Monique is like, yeah, I don't understand what's been going on. Like, I wanted them to come to the fire pit and they sat in there talking for an hour. Be honest, they was just waiting for Ashley to put the baby to sleep. I really feel like because they saw how long it was taking for Ashley to put the baby to sleep, maybe they could have went outside with Monique and them. And then when Ashley came out, pulled her to the side, told her and then rejoined the group. Like, told her outside where everybody can see them. And then rejoin the group. But at the same time, nobody's trying to 
jump through hoops to please Monique either. So it is what it is. They wanted to talk, so they talked. Um, when Monique says that, Ashley kind of says, well, what they needed to talk about was extremely important. So Monique is like, it doesn't matter what you're talking about. It's the fact that I didn't get a heads up. Well, Candace said that um, she had already apologized to her if she felt a way about about them being pulled off to the side. She just had to get the information to her and then they joined the group. Robin is like, you shouldn't come down on Candace because she was only the messenger and uh, she really, you know, was probably feeling a way. She was probably hurt for Ashley and Monique bust out laughing. So Wendy's like... So you don't think that they were being genuine? And Monique is like, y'all want some of these Danishes? No? All right, I'm going to go back upstairs then. So Robin says, Monique doesn't want people gossiping because she doesn't want people gossiping about her marriage. Karen comes to the group and she's like, look, Ashley, if you want a soldier for Michael, I don't want to know or need to know unless you actually want to talk to me. That's a friend. After that, Karen says, well, I need to go take a bath because my coochie stink. Mm-mm, TMI, honey. TMI, you already told us that it's old and moist. All right, so the rest of the men are arriving. So Wendy and Robin, they were outside talking about the night before. Now, Robin wasn't there because she went to bed at the same time Giselle did. So Wendy was telling Robin about what happened. Karen... I heard you drunk up all the fireball last night. Karen looked straight at her and was like, what are you talking about? I almost fell out laughing. You truly would have thought Karen did not know what that girl was talking about. And Robin gets pissed off. See, Wendy, this is, this is exactly what I'm talking about with her. This is exactly what I'm talking about. Is it with Robin and uh, Karen now? Is there something there or that was just a stupid moment? All right, so Wendy's Wendy's husband, Eddie, joins the group outside. Well, he joins Robin and Wendy outside. So the first thing Robin did was ask him a question. So does she have a hard time apologizing when she's wrong? He's like, no, she's never wrong. And he was like, yeah, babe, you like, you like how I brought that back. You like how I brought that back, right? They smack high five. I like that. That's a cute moment. Because <laughs> um, I think Robin was about to be messy. So they show Ashley and she's anxious and feeling nervous about the text messages that Candace had brought to her the night before. She's just kind of loving on baby Dean. And it's extremely sad to see this kind of stuff because I'm sure that the fact that she's going through postpartum does not make this any easier at all. Like, not easy at all. So, on top of postpartum, you got your a husband that is going haywire. Apparently, outside of the rules that y'all have set and was in your marriage. So, Candace and Chris joins Wendy, Robin, and Eddie outside. Oh, and then Karen comes out and joins them as well. And she is looking ready for Ray, honey. She is ready. So when it comes down to this blow up between Monique and Candace, Candace felt like a heads up was not needed because it was a private, private situation that nobody else needed to know about. Monique feels like it was disrespectful because it's her time and her plans because it's her house. To be honest, I'm going to have to agree with Candace because they have been doing it her uh, Monique's way the entire time. And uh, just to step off for a moment to have a conversation, she didn't like that. Yeah, that's somewhat of a control freak. It is what it is. They, I mean, for some s'mores and, and a fire pit, they'll come out when they when they get ready to come out. Like, I know she wanted to the, the I know she wanted them to enjoy the moment, but it was like. Wasn't that serious? I mean, she's rolling her eyes at the window and doing the most. Robin says that she did not blame Candace for walking away. I don't blame her either because Monique was about to be on another level. And Candace is only repeating the same stuff she's already said. She apologized. She's sorry. She had to get get something through to her. She needed to do it privately. 
It is what it is. It's done. It's over with. It was one moment. It was a long moment, but it was one moment. The only reason it was long is because they were waiting on Ashley to get Dean asleep. Either way, y'all, I got to give credit where credit is due. Candace's body is banging. Her body is on point. When she was walking away in them jeans, honey, I said, oh, oh, okay. I ain't gay or nothing, but I'm just saying. The, the girl, she got top and bottom. And there's, she's, she is pretty. I don't care when... Somebody put in, somebody put in the Facebook group that Candace looked like D.W. from Arthur. People need to stop playing. People need to stop playing. I guess that was supposed to have been a key, 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 key. So Wendy said, y'all hoes got energy. So we see Giselle at the award ceremony. And she is in the running for the African American Literary Award. Y'all, Giselle won. She beat out two other people, and I'm very proud of her for that. So Karen goes out um, outside because Ray is on his way, and she thinks he's there. So she go outside, she meet him, and uh, Karen says, I miss you. And Ray says, hasn't been that long. Ray, I'm going to need you to just learn the right things to say. So the men are inside, and they're talking. Chris, Monique's Chris, is talking about how Monique wants him to get snipped. Now, Eddie, Whitney wants Eddie to get snipped, too. He's thinking about doing it, too. Well, according to Monique's Chris, he don't want to get it done if he don't still jerk, twitch, and, and pop his toes at his climax, okay? And then, if he do it, he ought to be able to command sex, oral sex, whenever he wants. And then he had to laugh at himself because he knew that was like beyond crazy. Okay, because he have a, a vasectomy. He wants a, <laughs> a oral sex robot. Is that what he wants? I don't know. So everybody is meeting up again. Everybody's together. Uh, Ray comes in or whatever. And he's never met Baby Dean. So he had a little moment with Baby Dean. High-fiving Baby Dean and everything. Candace is in her confessionals. And she is hot. She is done with Monique. She don't have a good reason in her heart. Why she should stay in her house. Was there a good reason before you came? Candace's Chris and Monique's Chris are both really good friends and they should not have to deal with the back and forth of their wives not getting along the way they're still going to talk and communicate so candace is packing and then all the men are bringing in food and uh uh, Can uh monique's presence and candace is standing at the door listening to everybody saying happy birthday and i think she hesitated on going back in but they were like where's candace and Monique's like, oh, she probably upstairs packing because we, we got into a disagreement earlier. And she's like, nope, I'm right here. Even though she was upstairs packing. <laughs> it's so funny. So Karen is, Ray, come here. I'm just feeling lightheaded. Ray, uh, Karen is hung over, honey. All the way over. She had nine shots. I'm surprised she woke up when she did. So, uh, the group is sitting at the table. They're just kind of going around talking and... Uh, Wendy's like, I'm happy now that I've ate. And she's like, you get hangry? Her husband was like, oh yeah, she gets hangry. Then we find out that Wendy's mom and Eddie's mom are pretty much like enemies. They don't like each other. They've never liked each other. They don't get along. They don't agree. There is nothing that they can do about their moms not liking each other, period. But it was sad to find out that Eddie's mom, he has not talked to his mom since he married Wendy. That is so sad. His mom doesn't even know his children. That is sad. I don't care what culture you are a part of. I don't care what you think somebody defied you and all this and that. This situation is bigger than just you and your emotions and your feelings. What about these children? And matter of fact, the hate is so deep that Eddie's parents threatened all their friends that if you go to this wedding, we are no longer going to be friends. So at that point, they kind of, 
Eddie said that the opportunity has arose for his mom to reconcile her issues with the family and she chose not to do so. So he said there's not much more I can say after that. So Karen asked, well, do you think you can forgive it? Well, Wendy does not think she can forgive it because she sees the hurt that is within Eddie's heart because of his own mom. And she says she wipes his tears. She sees the pain. She helps build him back up after she tears him down. And Karen just puts out there, okay, but if the moment is genuine and you really feel it and there is a moment for forgiveness, do it. Because this is a lifetime. This is forever. So do it if the if the opportunity presents itself. All right, so everybody is done eating. Now they want to play a game. They want the men to mimic their wives so that the women can get to know the men better. So first, Ray gets up there. Is it time for my tea? Could you bring it to me, please? Treating Ray like her little servant. <laughs> Eddie was so funny. He's like, which outfit should I wear? Should I wear this one? Should I wear this one? Well, bae, I think you... I don't know, bae. Well, pick one. I think you should wear this one. But I don't like that one. Well, boy, or that one. You're just saying that. Like, oh my gosh, that is so funny. And that's real. I like that. I like Wendy and Eddie. Go, y'all. Okay. So then Monique's Chris is his turn. And he grabs a wine bottle. And Monique is like, what are you doing? Chris gets down on his knees with that wine bottle. Turns the biggest side to his mouth and go... And gets up. I'm just playing. Chris, you are so disrespectful. And I don't care if that was a joke or not. You don't. Why would you do that in front of other men and say this is what you're. And then got up and justified it and said it does accurately describe us though. Starting to. Chris starting to get that side eye from me. Something, mm, something ain't right. So Candace's Chris come in and he's all, hello, I am Candace. I am Miss United States. Nice to meet you. He goes and flips a switch. Get out my house. Got the butter knife. Get out my back. And he throws it. Candace Chris knows exactly what he married, honey. I love them together. I don't care what nobody say. I love Candace and Chris. I love them together because while she's bougie, he's down to earth. She wants to spin. He doesn't want to spin. She like to show off and all these glitz and glams. He's down to earth and like, nah, we're going to bring that down to a budget level, honey. I love it. Marriage is a balancing act, people. Y'all, so everybody's leaving. Karen, Wendy, Ashley, and Robin... They're all leaving and everything. And um, Monique is laying across the couch. She's, she keeps telling Chris she's tired. She's yawning. He don't want her yawning while he's talking. But when Candace goes to leave, Monique has easily fallen asleep at that moment when she's the only one left to say goodbye to. Monique is... Monique is sleep, honey. Like sleep sleep she ain't sleep <laughs> y'all Monique has admitted to being petty she has admitted to being controlling Monique just did not want to say another thing to Candace she wanted her out she wanted her gone but at least Candace did say thank you goodbye I'm loving Candace right now I'm loving her I still like Monique she need to stop collecting this stuff though talk it out Talk it out or either dr look, if you're not going to talk it out, you need to go somewhere till you can talk it out. It might not be with a person, but you need to go to therapy, honey, because you about to blow. Get it off your chest before you kill somebody or drag somebody. <laughs> All right. So 24 hours later, everyone's back home. We see Ashley. She's driving in the car with uh, baby Dean and she's calling Michael. Michael, she asked, can they talk? Michael said, I'm reviewing a document and I'm eating lunch. And he sounded so aggravated with her. She He kept repeating that he's reviewing a document and eating lunch. Now, I don't understand what his problem is. 
But when your wife is calling you and you know she has a young baby, why are you so irritated when she's just calling to talk to you? You don't know if it's related to the baby. If you don't know if she's sick, he's sick, you do not know. So what is the problem that she apparently caught you off guard with a phone call? Who you eating lunch with, Michael? I don't understand him. And you know what? I do not want to talk about Michael this season. Or any other season. I'm sick of seeing his face on this screen when the Potomac Housewives come on. So the conversation that they had uh, that night when he got home is that something inappropriate did happen at the strip club. And he says it's something that he regrets and something that he feels bad for. And Ashley said that the conversation got extremely heated. He slept somewhere and she slept in the baby's room. I know Ashley is messy, but honestly... I don't feel like she deserved this. I know Ashley probably married for money um, or benefits. It's the case, so be it. But him acting like this and now she's pregnant with baby number two, it makes me sad for her. An hour later, more news hit the blogs about Michael. Michael is in a hotel room with somebody in his boxers. Only his boxers. So Giselle, of course gets wind of it and she calls Candace and and tells Candace I got 40 plus DMs regarding Michael being somewhere in a hotel in his boxers and Karen says that Michael's doing something but she don't think it's Ashley Monique said at this point baby Dean should be all that matters and I agree with that I believe Ashley needs to think more of herself she is going to be taken care of, but she did. She signed a prenup with him. She signed it. So she really said that she was not with him for the money. But mm, like I said, maybe it's benefits. I don't know. But and then Robin says, keep your penis in your pants and go home to your wife. Have you said those lines before, Robin? Let me stop shading Robin. I like Robin. Um... I just don't like how she feels like she got to be the, the narrator of any conversation or argument or disagreement or anything. An instigator. That's what it is. But y'all, that was it. That was it, y'all. Real Housewives of Potomac, Fireball, Fire Pits, Episode 7. I will see y'all the next time.